What's up everybody, this video is going to be short and sweet, but make sure to watch it all the way through so you can get all the points so you can benefit the most from this so you can sprint your fastest. Now I've found that with athletes, typically they tend to struggle with the first few steps of the sprint. So today we're going to talk about what you can do from a technique perspective to make sure that you're nailing those first few steps of the sprint so you can accelerate your fastest, reach the fastest top speeds you're capable of, and run the fastest times that you can. So when we think about acceleration, you know, a lot of people are going to talk about, oh, you need to drive your knees or you need to stay low or you need to push. Personally, I found that none of those uh, cues work for me and none of those cues have worked for most of the athletes that I've worked with. They may work for some, so great, that's, that's all well and good. But there's a, a couple things that need to happen for us to accelerate effectively. We already know from previous videos and articles that I've posted, which you can check out if you want to learn more, um, that we need to apply horizontal force to the ground in order to accelerate. So how do we do that? Well, we have to direct our foot properly into the ground, and that is both a combination of the direction with which your foot moves through the air and where your foot lands on the ground. So if I direct my foot back toward the track, down and back, that's going to allow me to apply horizontal forces, a little bit of vertical forces to support my body weight, and the reaction or the result of that will be that I will move up and out off of the track. You know, we will move in the direction opposite of which we apply force. So if we hit the ground with our foot moving forward, endured braking forces, those braking forces are going to try to push us back and that's going to slow us down, so that's not effective. We need to be purely propulsive in the early steps of the sprint. So to do that, we have to attack the ground with our foot moving back into the ground. But that's not the only thing, because if we attack the ground with our foot moving back, but it lands too far in front of the body, like say we drive our knee and we really focus on driving our knee, so we kind of get stuck here in this high knee position, which causes the foot to swing out a little bit. And then when we attack down and back from a more open knee angle, we land, say, uh, under the chest. Say we hit the ground with our foot under our chest on the first step. Well, what's going to happen? Well, our foot's going to hit the ground. Okay, it's going to be on the ground. But most of our weight is going to be distributed behind that joint. So all that weight is going to pull down on that joint, and it's going to collapse that ankle joint. So you're going to have a sloppy ground contact. You're not going to be able to use your tendons effectively. You're going to have to muscle your way through it. You're going to have excessively long ground contact times. Your frequency is going to slow down, and everything falls apart. So while it's very important to get the direction of the foot movement, you know, get that to be done properly, if that's all that happens and you're not thinking about where you're aiming your foot, then you're not going to accelerate as fast as possible. So really the point of this video is you need to make sure that you're focusing on aiming properly with your foot in those first few steps of the sprint. So where is that, you know, going to happen? Where do we need that foot to land? On the first step, it should be landing under or behind your hip. The more explosive you are, the easier it's going to be to land behind your hip, but we should at least be aiming to have that foot land directly under our hip so that our ankle does not collapse, so we can push ourselves forward without having to think about it because we're in a position that allows us to push rather than having to pull ourselves. And if we do that, you're going to find that your frequency will improve, your ground contact times will improve, your acceleration times will improve, and it'll be a lot easier to accelerate. All of a sudden, you'll find yourself at 10 or 20 meters in less time than it took and with less effort than it took when you were hitting further in front. So as you're sprinting on these first few steps, what you need to be thinking about is once your knee is up, you don't have to think about driving your knee up, but once you sense that your knee is up in front of the body, you need to be attacking back and aiming under your hips with that ground contact. So aim under your hips or behind your hips if you're explosive enough. Boom, I'm behind my hips. Now I can easily push out from there and maintain a stiff ankle. Then on the second step, same thing. Once you're here, boom, aim under your hips. Third step, aim under your hips. And if you do that on the first, second, and third step, you're going to find that your acceleration improves, you're going to feel quicker, your frequency is going to be better, you're going to be less likely to get injured because you're not putting yourself in a bad position with your hamstrings or with your Achilles tendon. Everything gets better when you aim properly with your foot. So as you're sprinting, especially when you're doing acceleration work, make sure that you're focusing on aiming properly with your foot 
and where we want to aim is right under or right behind the hips, especially on those first few steps of the sprint. Then as you go, you can gradually rise. That point of contact will move forward to where it is under your chest when you're in an upright position. But until we get to that point, in those first few steps, we need to be aiming with our foot under the hips, moving down and back through the air, and just focus on doing that for the first few steps of the sprint, and you will likely see better acceleration times. You'll feel better in acceleration. You'll be more efficient. That will save you energy for later in the race. So not only can this help improve the beginning part of the sprint, but it can also save you energy and allow you to be more efficient throughout the race so you can finish stronger and run faster times in your races or when you're getting tested in the 40 or the 60.